Welcome to part 3 of creating our 3D model of a spinner using Onshape. In part 1 we created the model of the bearing and in part 2 we created the spinner. In this video we will be creating the center hub. Looking at the drawing of the hub it has a button like shape with a diameter of 22 millimeters and a center shaft that will press fit halfway into the center hole of the bearing. Looking closer at the section view, there's a small shoulder of 0.25 millimeters that will rest against the center of the bearing and leave a clearance between the rest of the bearing and the hub so that it can spin freely. The diameter of this center shaft is the same as the bearing center hole at 8 millimeters. We will use the edge of the bearing to set this diameter by projecting this edge from the existing part into the sketch of the hub. The edge of the shoulder has a diameter of 10 millimeters and a thickness of 0.25 millimeters. The total height is 5.75 millimeters and the arc that forms the recess in the top surface has a radius of 35 millimeters. For the sketch, I'll draw a profile of one half of this section view and then use the center line that is coincident to the origin to revolve it to create the solid part. I've opened my Onshape document named Spinner that I created in a previous video. If you've not completed these steps, please refer to the project playlist for previous instructions. In the Part Studio, you can see the existing parts, the bearing and the spinner. They are also represented over here in the parts list, and we've named them previously. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the spinner if you don't have the sketch planes visible, use P on the keyboard to turn them on. And we're going to change the view of the bearing. I'm going to use a section view. It wants to know the section plane that's going to cut. We'll use the front and accept that. We're also starting a sketch now on the front sketch plane and use N on the keyboard to view normal to the sketch plane, P to turn the sketch plane visibility off. And what I'm seeing now is, is the bearing in a half section, but none of this information is actually part of my sketch. If I turn off the visibility of the bearing itself, there's nothing on this sketch plane. But at the same time, I want to use the edge of the bearing as part of the sketch, so I will use a Use tool, and I just want to choose this one edge to the right of the inside. With this chosen, I now can turn off the bearing, and you'll see that that line has been projected into this sketch and can be used as reference and as part of our current sketch. I'll start a line and snap to the origin come across and I want to be at the midpoint of this line. I'm also going to snap to the end point of the line, snap to the end point again, and I'm going to start with this shoulder. So I have a small shoulder there now to the outside edge of the hub and then the height here and a line going this way. With that I'm going to right click and escape the line. Next I need a center line, so I'll go line and then construction. Hesitating on the origin, I'm going to project a vertical line up and click, come back down through the origin and create a center line. Right click and escape. I can now dimension these. I'll use my dimension tool and I'm going to use a center line dimension. What that means is I'll click on, this is the outside edge of the shoulder, and then I'll click on the center line. And if I pull in this direction, I can actually create a dimension for the whole diameter on both sides of the center line here. And I know that this distance is 10, so I've established that. And then the outside is 22, so this outside edge to the center line is 22 millimeters. I know that this edge right here is 2. This Horizontal edge is 2. The shoulder height is 0.25. And 
and the overall height from here to the bottom is going to be 5.75 and with that I have it fully constrained if yours is still blue grab a hold and pull and see if there are any constraints that you've left out next I need to create the arc that comes across but to do that I need to know where this line exists on the other side of the center line so I'll use a mirror and I'll choose the center line as my mirror line and then I'll choose this line that I want to mirror to the other side hit escape and now I'm going to choose a three-point arc snap it to the end point of this line coincident to the end point of this line and have a radius of 35 with that I've established those but I don't have a profile yet and a profile only shows up if the area is completely enclosed so I'm missing a line I'm going to use a line from snapping to the origin and snapping to this arc that creates the profile so I see my finished profile there with that I'm going to accept this and end the sketch right click choose isometric we're now going to use this profile to revolve the solid part I'll choose a revolve and it wants me to choose the profile that we're going to use and I also need a revolve axis we'll use the center line and I can see this is the shape that I want because I have a section view turned on I'm only seeing half but this will be fine for right now I know that there is a rounded edge on this top outside I'm going to use a fillet and set the fillet distance or radius at one millimeter and then choose this outside edge to create that rounded corner I'll accept this and I know that down here on the bottom edge of the shaft there is a chamfer this is going to be cut at equal distance across that just to relieve for inserting the shaft into the bearing so we'll set this at one millimeter we'll choose this bottom edge of the shaft to cut that corner off and I'll accept that with this I'm going to look at this from the front view and this looks like the correct uh, shape that I want to check the fit in the bearing let's turn the visibility of the bearing on and I can see that this fits the way that I want and let's also check the responsiveness of the hub to the size of the bearing so if I were to go back to my very first sketch which was of the bearing and I'll go over here to the feature list and say edit that sketch I'm going to view normal to the sketch plane and here's the sketch that we made of the bearing if we change this inside diameter say the only bearing available had a diameter of six millimeters so I needed to change that I can see that the sketch response immediately will accept that and go back to the isometric view and the front view the bearing inside hole has changed to six millimeters and the hub has also responded with the same update I'll undo this and you see that it responds back so that's operating the way I wanted to with my top-down design with this I'm going to right click and turn off the section view turn back on the visibility of the spinner right click and choose isometric view looking over here in the parts list I see part number three which is my hub so I'm going to right click and rename this the hub and I like the blue color so I'll leave that the same and with this we've created the three parts that will make up our assembly which we'll do next